Hey, welcome back. I've been thinking about making videos on Zero Trust for a while now. And so I'm gonna make uh, some videos here on Zero Trust. And we're gonna talk about the fundamentals, the definition, we're gonna do some deep dives into the pillars. What does this mean? Now I know what you're thinking, Matt. Okay, Zero Trust, it's a marketing buzzword. Vendors out there just trying to sell me on something. Um, you're not wrong, right? It has different definitions for different people. So just do me a favor, just take the two words zero trust out of your vocabulary for just a moment. Let's talk about cybersecurity. Let's talk about best practices. Let's talk about how to have good cyber hygiene. And then we'll bring that back to what that means for zero trust. So let's talk about why is this even important? Why are we having this conversation? Well, I'm gonna rewind the clock about 20 years. Uh, I started my career uh, back in roughly 2002. And so at that time, I was going into a physical office building. I was badging in with a, a physical you know, ID with my credentials at a security guard station. And once I got into that building and I got to my office, it was assumed that I was supposed to be there. So anything I did in that office, it was assumed that it's really Matt and not an impersonator or an imposter. So I'd go to my computer, I'd turn it on, I'd sign in, and then I'd sign into any of my applications and access my corporate data, and away I go, right? Well, the problem with that was 20 years ago, it was thought that if I have all of my data and all my resources and assets behind the company firewall in my data center, that I could control all of that. Right? So I would put intrusion protection systems at the edge and intrusion detection systems. And I'd have uh, you know, crazy network security taking place. And then I would be locking down those client computers to make sure that you know, the users couldn't do anything I didn't want them to do. And because I was in full control of everything across an IT environment, that it was secure. And uh, at the time, I was, I was right. You know, I mean, at that time, and it was a different time back then, but everything was under lock and key. Now, fast forward the clock 20 years, it's 2022. The way I compute is vastly different than the way it was 20 years ago. Number one, I'm not going into a physical office. Now, I may go into an office every now and then or a few days a week, sure. But I'm actually working from home or I'm actually accessing data and resources from a network that is not my corporate network. Uh, the coffee shop, a hotel, an airport, my house, so on and so forth. Now, to make matters even worse is I'm using a non-corporate asset. I'm using a smartphone. I'm using a tablet. I'm using a personal computer that IT has no control over. All right. Now, when you think about that, that is that is crazy. Even back in 2020, or even back in 2002, right? And now with 2022, that's quite the norm, but I'm also doing other things, right? Back in 2002, I was having meetings in person in a physical meeting room. Now, yes, we still have physical meeting rooms today in the industry, but a lot of companies out there are having the hybrid model where they are having people in the room, but they also have people joining the online meeting. Or I may be having a full on, 100% online meeting with nobody in the physical meeting room. And that's happening over cloud computing, which is occurring in a different data center that my company does not own. And uh, I have no control over that, right? And so then I got to worry about all of those security risks. And then how I'm accessing data itself. Again, back in 2002, data was under lock and key. In this example, it was in a file cabinet, right? That was in the physical building. Or it was in a file share that was in my company's data center that I had full control over. Not anymore. In 2022, it is in the cloud, right? It's in SaaS or software as a service applications. It's in you know cloud file storage. Um, and to make matters even worse, not only do I have to account for how an end user at my company is accessing that data, they may be accessing from a different device that I don't manage in a different location that I have no control over. And my customers, my business partners, who are not even a part of my directory or my security boundary, they also are accessing that data as well. So now I got to account for that. And that's a bit eventually what we kind of lead up to here, folks, is I have my legacy line of business apps in my data center that I still have to access. And I've got all this stuff happening up here in the cloud that I'm accessing. 
and I'm doing it from different locations, and I'm doing it from devices that the company does not manage. And my business partners and my customers are also doing it as well. So that's a lot to think about, right? And that is why we're having a zero trust conversation. So now let's bring the two words zero trust back into the conversation. Now I'll talk about the definition of zero trust in the next video. Don't worry about that yet. But why is this even a thing? Why is it important? Well, as I, I just kind of went through the last 20 years, we've learned that security is quite complex. And when you think about the threat landscape over the last even few years, it's drastically evolved. So how we keep up with that as defenders and how we secure the enterprise environment, that's growing in complexity almost every day. And so that old, uh, that old thing of, you know, hey, I'm going to trust the network. If you're on my network, then that means I trust you and that you're supposed to be there. That goes out the window. Because as we just talked about, I'm not on your network. Now, we'll come back to the network side here in another video because I do have some things to talk about there. Now, the other thing here is the assets. And yes, a BYOD device, a bring your own device, a personal device is an asset. Those are leaving the network. So now I got to account for that. I got to figure out, well, that, if that device is no longer on my network, how do I control it? How do I secure it? How do I wrap that security boundary around it? But the biggest part here is, again, the threat landscape has evolved and it continues to evolve. Email phishing, targeting credential theft, to steal using a password, or even fish multi-factor authentication. Yeah, that's a thing. But the other side of it is my security teams, the IT pros that are monitoring these alerts and looking at the dashboards and the speeds and feeds to defend the organization from cyber threats, they're being overwhelmed because there's all sorts of signals coming in. And some of those signals might be cryptic. It might be a little too complex for a human or even one human to digest and try to analyze. So we have all these problems happening right now. And that is why zero trust is a thing. And that's why zero trust is important. So in the next video, I'm gonna talk about what exactly is zero trust. We're gonna go into the definition of it. And again, it's not a marketing thing. It's, it's not a vendor solution thing. It's more around a set of principles. And we'll talk about those principles in the next video. All right, folks, give me a thumbs up if you like this video and be sure to subscribe because I've got some more videos coming. In fact, over the next 60 days, I'm gonna publish a new video every single day. So be sure to subscribe so you can see those new videos. All right, hey, hope you have a great day. We'll see you later. Take care.